today. I couldn't decide today what jewelry to wear, so I wore a lot of different ones just so I could show you and have fun. So I hope you have your Kleenex, you have your Bible. I have mine. I'm excited to be with you. I am turning on my phone so I can see any comments that you might have. You know, I probably could see the comments here, but I would have to turn the comments on. I would have to get to the place where I could get down and read them so I just decide it's simpler if I just look at my phone right I am playing with my set a little if you can tell I moved my chairs around I got my lamps up around my head tell me if that looks kind of freaky or weird hi Jean hi Charlie hi Sherry from Georgia so as you all know last week I did not have school of worship here in California and I was a little weepy and upset about it last weekend but I gave it to the Lord and I laid it down and we are now moving everyone who was scheduled to uh, either the Holy Spirit School in June, uh, which is Pentecost weekend. It will be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, a four-day school over a weekend. And it's uh, June 2nd through the 5th. And I'm just telling you right now, because we are moving over 60 people between June and July School of Worship, which will be uh, July 18th through the 22nd, those two schools are going to fill up fast. In fact, they are already, both of them, more than half full. So, I'm just saying, if God is leading you to be a part of one of those schools, you need to call 918-639-1747. Would someone type that in the comments, please? 918-639-1747. And Debbie can register you over the phone and hold your place and get you all set up. I know because we will be uh, in the same hotel we normally are in, we have limited space. So both of those schools are gonna fill up. I'm also working uh, with Laura to see if there's a way that sometime maybe March or 1st of April, right in that time, uh, maybe we'll do an online, uh, three-day weekend online school. Maybe a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, three-day online school. For those of you who absolutely just can't get to a school, that, um, that would be a way that you could come to a school of worship. So Holy Spirit School will be, uh, School of the Holy Spirit will be June 2 through 5. That's over the Pentecost uh, weekend. And then the next full California school will be July the 18th through the 22nd. And then we also have a three-day school in May in Michigan. And I know all my Michigan folks are not online with me right now because uh, Pastor Laura is doing a special Sunday evening at their church and it's happening right now. So uh, if you are uh, in the Michigan area, we do have a school schedule there in May. I believe it's May 16, 17, and 18. It's a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday. We always end on a Wednesday night service with everybody just, we go deep in the spirit, it's wonderful. Also, we have our school of worship, our first one in Georgia, and that happens to be 29th and 30th of April, and we'll be at the Pope's Church with Pastor Gregory and Pastor Jackie and Pastor Allison uh, on May the 1st. So that weekend, we'll be in Georgia, and then the next in-person school will be in March at Pastor Kathy and Pastor Larry Everhart's church in Gainesville, Texas. So you can go to our website if you would like, SalemFamilyMinistries.org, and you can sign up through Eventbrite and hold your place that way, or you can call Debbie. Did anyone type in? No, no one typed in. So 918-639-1747. There you go. There's the phone number. You can call uh, Miss Debbie and hold your place that way at any of the schools. So hi Mahesh, hi Joe, hi Rhonda, hi Connie, um, Michelle, Jesse, Jesse, we're going to be praying for Gabriel. Um, hi Elizabeth, hi Liz uh, Vance. I have two Liz Vances in my life. Liz, Liz and Benny Vance are pastors in Grenada, Mississippi. And now I have Liz Vance from Oklahoma in my life. So I'm very glad to see all of you today. And I pray that you are doing well. I wanted to start today by giving you an update on Harry. He is doing uh, as well as can be expected, to be honest. Um, we are still expecting a miracle in his lungs, but I see, I see the progress. 
I see uh, progress in his physical body. I see progress in his uh, emotional. I see progress in his uh, spirit man. I see progress in his mind. And, and so I'm just asking you, please keep praying and please keep standing with me for a miracle. And while we're on that, I'm also praying for a miracle to manifest for Pastor Dave Kokenauer. He is believing God for a miracle uh, to defeat cancer and he's talked about it, so I'm not saying anything that uh, he wouldn't. But we're praying and believing God for a miracle. I've taken the whole Speak the Word for Healing book and I have uh, gone through that book for him. And if you don't have it yet, I know many of you have already ordered it uh, because I'm filling the orders. Just so you know, for every um, for every order you make, I fill the order. I pray over it. If it's a book like this, and you speak the word for over your family for healing, uh, which I use when we're praying. Uh, I, this is the book I did for Pastor Dave. I do it for so many. I've done it for my husband. And then when you're done, you're logging you're putting their names into the scripture and speaking the word out loud then you're praying and you're writing what the lord gives you for them and then when you're done with the 40 days you give them the book and say this is what god's been saying about you everybody wants not only do you say i'm praying for you but you got the proof that you've been praying and the word speaks for itself and it'll speak to them and i believe help them uh even with their faith and be encouraged that you're praying and others are too so I'm encouraging you to get your Speak the Word for Healing. We also have that in a, a smaller book in Speak the Word uh, Over Your Family for Salvation and uh, another one on finances too, those little 40-day books. But this one is brand new and re-edited and added an epilogue in the end that the Lord gave me to add. And so it's a brand new book in this size. So um, you can go right to our website, SalemFamilyMinistries.org, and you can order any of our books. I'm going to be using the um, uh, Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship today because I have a new, I have the book and the workbook out here in my hand, and I'm using this one today. Uh, this is Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship. If you've come to school, this would be your second uh, session. When you, you first come, you do We Who Worship, Book and Workbook. The second time, you do Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship. And of course, you keep doing it after you leave. But I'll be using this uh, to talk about a little revelation that the Lord gave me today. And so, um, and yes, somebody just asked about my jewelry. Yes, I have on my uh, cross earrings with the little gold hearts in the center. And I wanted to wear this one today. It's the Tree of Life because it has this big gray stone. And I have on my new gray shirt from Caleb and Sarah Kokenauer that they sent me for Christmas. And I just love it. And I put on this one. It's the Tree of Life. A uh, tiny little Tree of Life inside the heart comes in silver and gold and this is very long but I wanted you to see it so I doubled it around my neck twice but it, it has a big tree of life it has this big gray stone and then it also says tree of life I just love wearing jewelry I got this big gorgeous uh, bracelet today this one is from uh, Corinthians 13 love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud love never fails first Corinthians and so uh Got on my prayer bracelet. Keep ordering your prayer bracelets and send them out uh, to people. I gave one to my neighbor Dottie for Christmas. And uh, this is the new blessed bracelet. I think so pretty. Of course, I've got on Women of the Nation. And then this is the one. It's got a little gray in it and a little brown and a little snakeskin look. And it says faith. Because we walk by faith every year, but specifically this year. So, the update on Harry. Lungs, uh, the last report said the lungs were operating or functioning at 51%, but we've been speaking to them. Uh, we have a CAT scan next month. We're believing God that um, it's going to be much better than 51%. We're expecting scar tissue to be leaving his lungs. We're expecting his lungs to be expanding and for his oxygenation to be improving. And he's pushing and doing everything in the natural and we're praying and believing everything in the spirit. And, and we are expecting God. We are expecting a miracle in 2022. Let there be light in Harry's lungs. I, I had a dream after last uh, weekend's message when I gave that prophetic word that we are to prophesy, let there be light. I had a dream that there was uh, some kind of laser invention and I, I woke up from this dream knowing that God was going to send uh, a tool that would help eradicate the scar tissue from Harry's lungs. So I'm excited about that and expecting it to, to come to pass. 
And then I, I'm also uh, ex just expecting you to keep praying as I'm praying for you. I wanted to start today uh, in prayer. You know I've got my huge uh, book here. This is my prayer book. I can't even lift it with one hand anymore. It's so filled with your prayers that you send in to SalemFamilyMinistries.org prayer request. Uh, and I appreciate you sending those prayers in. And I um, have many that we want to keep praying for Keely. And you see I have my little Speak the Word for Healing book right here in my prayer book. And so um, Keely, we're praying for her husband, Ryan, with COVID, and um, I have all these others. I just want to start bringing them up. My my friend, uh, precious friend, Pamela, uh, who has shingles, and we speak against those shingles, that shingles virus, to leave her body in the name of Jesus. We command the shingles virus to go, and we have so many that we're praying against this COVID virus, and I'm just going to start naming some names, and then we're going to pray. And then I'm going to get into the word. But I just wanted to start this way today. I'm praying for my uh, Harry's cousin, Danny, and his wife, Chris. And Chris is in the hospital on a ventilator. And um, they have diagnosed that the COVID did so much damage to her lungs that they're now saying it's like COVID emphysema. And so we're praying against the holes in her lungs for them to heal, for them to close up, for her lungs to be perfect and whole, lacking nothing. And Chris, I believe with Danny and we put our faith together with everyone, we're expecting you to be healed and get out of the hospital. And um, we're also praying for um, Jesse and for little Gabriel. We're expecting a miracle for him, Jesse and Rachel. And we're also praying for Jeff um, and also your, your niece, uh, Morgan, both with COVID, and your father-in-law, Dave, with a, has had an uh, infection and an amputation and uh, going to have more skin grafts in front of him. We're praying. We're praying for Christina Thompson. You are healed in the name of Jesus. And uh, Javi and Laura and uh, Pastor Jamie and uh, Kurt and Michelle and her family and pastors, and I'm not going to say their names because I didn't have their permission. And then also uh, for Pastor Christy, and uh, Shat's line and destiny, and for Scott not to get this uh, go around with the the virus this time in the name of Jesus, protect Father. Just send the blood of Jesus to we send the blood of Jesus to protect all who have been exposed in the name of Jesus, and we speak life, life, life. We speak life to their bodies and life to their lungs and life to their. Um, to, we speak against every symptom must go and their immune system to come up strong in the name of Jesus. Michelle is asking for prayer for her brother Curtis, and we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for healing Curtis and for depression to go in the name of Jesus and to restore the family in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, uh, as we continue to pray for Jesse's uh, dad with the infection. Thank you, Jesse, for sending that prayer request in more than once. And then Bethany's asking for prayer for Darren. He's in Oklahoma, and he's a young man with three young children, and he's been in bad shape. Um, but last night, they tried the budesonide. Glory to God. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing and use the right to try act. It is a right to try. We have the right to try any medication that we feel the Spirit of God or recommended is telling us to try, and we have the right to try it. And doctors and nurses sometimes in hospitals will try to act like you're, you're stupid. Well, I have the right to try. That, that is a patient's right to say, I want to try this medication. It is the doctor's responsibility to tell you what the risks and the benefits are, but they are not to tell you you can't take a medicine if you want it. And many, many people are, are being lied to and saying, you know, that you, you can't, you can't take that medicine here. The, the, our protocol, you push, you demand, you say in the name of Jesus, and you pray before you go in there and you get your strength up and you go in there with the mind of Christ and the peace of God all over you. And you say, I demand that you try using the right to try act. I demand that you do one milligram nebulized budesonide every four hours and they're going to come back and say they can't do it for this reason and they can't do it for that but you just keep demanding and they will have to do it it we live in america and we have the right 
to try in the name of Jesus. Uh, Sherry's asking for prayer for Lupe and for Daniel uh, De La Hoya, and they are the head intercessors at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in uh, San Bernardino. They both have COVID, and we speak against that virulent disease that's trying to move across our land and our world in the name of Jesus, and it's got to go. And Sherry is asking for prayer for Stephanie, who's on a ventilator, and Chris, who's hospitalized the second time, uh, but now home, but struggling with pain and fever, and Vicki, uh, all suffering from COVID. And we, we, Father, we send the word across the airwaves right now into hospitals and into homes for healing to come forth. We send the word, just like Jesus sent the word, and the centurion servant was healed. Father, we send the word across the airwaves, and right where you are, you be praying with me right now. Be praying in the Holy Ghost, and be speaking the word, and sending the word of healing across the land in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father. Uh, Beth is asking for prayer for Darren. Uh, he's improving, um, but the very next day they put him on a ventilator and he remains on a ventilator. We keep standing with the family. We keep praying in the name of Jesus. Marnie is asking for prayer for Paige, um, her daughter, who uh, tested positive for COVID. And as I said, so many of my, fr my own personal friends have told me uh, that they have tested positive and they have the symptoms and they're fighting through and I fight with you in Jesus name and you will live, you will not die you will declare the works of the Lord you will stand firm, you will not give up, you will not faint, you will not be weary in your well doing, you'll run you'll run and you'll walk again and you'll be strong in Jesus name. Our dear uh, precious little prayer warrior Kaylee Lord still asking for prayer for her husband uh, Todd and also for so many she asked for prayer for Steve uh, Moon and his wife Cindy uh, also a blockage in the heart enlarged heart but also for both uh, for COVID Steve is in the hospital Cindy is um, recovering at home I do believe if I'm remembering right uh, peace to Cindy though and also Ken who has COVID and his wife Robin who is at home and all fighting COVID in the name of Jesus. We fight in the name of Jesus. And my precious friend, Pastor Susan Warren, and one of my mentees, is asking for prayer for her friend, Cassandra. She's diagnosed with a brain aneurysm and MS a few months ago. And now they're saying that she has uh, colon cancer. And we just speak to her immune system in the name of Jesus. And we command her immune system to come up strong in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that you created our bodies to heal themselves, to live forever. Without sin, we would live forever. And guess what? When we get born again, we're going to live forever. And you're going to be living in this body glorified, just like Jesus' body was glorified. Yours will be glorified, and you'll be living in it. So we need to take care of it. And then we thank God for a glorified body. Thank you, Lord that that's what 2022 is all about receiving the glory in our bodies in our souls and in our spirits so that our spirit is glorified our soul our mind our will our emotion is glorified and our flesh is glorified and what how do we do that how do we have the glory of God in our flesh the glory of God in our soul it starts in your spirit. Your spirit must receive the glory of God. And you say to your spirit, let there be light. And you prophesy to your spirit. You prophesy to your soul. My mind is filled with the light of God. My emotions are filled with the light of God. My will is filled with the light of God. Everything about me is filled with the light of God. I am wall to wall Holy Ghost and filled with the light and the glory of God. Every part of my flesh, every sinew, every fiber, every cell, every thought that I have filled with the light and glory of God. Yes, 2022. What is your part? To be filled with the light and the glory of God. And you can be. It is not just for me. It is not just for someone that you know. It is for you. This promise of let there be light. Stand in the mirror and prophesy to yourself. Let there be light in your mind. Let there be light in your body. Let there be light in your emotions. Let there be light in your flesh. And if you're dealing with something in your flesh, in a specific part of your body, speak to it. I've been prophesying to my left 
left knee ever since I had COVID back in August. And I've been prophesying to my left knee, let there be light. You are healed knee. And right now, glory to God, I'm able to ride 20 miles a day on a bike. And I mean, not a stationary, but a real bike. And I'm able to do that without any pain because God is healing me and I'm prophesying to my knee. And I prophesied to my shoulder and I prophesied to my neck until all the pain and all the symptoms left. I even prophesied to my hair until COVID left my hair so that I know that I know that I know I am COVID free and filled with the glory of God. Now I speak to Samuel. Samuel's asking for prayer for healing from COVID for his brother Rick in the name of Jesus. Fever's got to go. Chills have got to go. Jan, I think Jan is asking for prayer for Judy and her husband John is in the hospital in St. Augustine, Florida with COVID and pneumonia. And according to what I was told by more than one doctor, COVID is pneumonia. It is COVID pneumonia. And so we speak to that pneumonia to leave his lungs in Jesus' name. Now, I understand, if I'm understanding right, this last uh, go round with the Omicron variant uh, may not be that same kind. So it doesn't always hit the lungs. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, uh, we speak life uh, to John. We speak life to his lungs. We speak life to his body. And we speak healing and wholeness to Judy too so that she can walk and not be weary. She can run. She can run in Jesus' name. Cecilia is asking for prayer for Madison who is uh, 17 years old and requesting complete healing, restoration, and protection, battling depression in the name of Jesus. Come out of that pit. Come out of that darkness. Father, we send the light of God into her thinking and into her brain and into her parts of her mind in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Uh, Bethany is asking um, for, when she asked for prayer for Darren, uh, she said that um, that he has leaking between his lungs. And so I'm, I'm just wondering if that is similar. You might ask the doctor, what is the diagnosis now? Because sometimes you go into the hospital with COVID, but the diagnosis changes. But they may continue to treat COVID when the diagnosis has changed. Harry went from COVID and then he didn't have COVID anymore. He outran that, but his body... Uh, had his diagnosis had gone into acute lung injury and uh, ARDS, uh, acute AR, respiratory distress syndrome. And so when that happened, the treatment needs to change. And sometimes the CDC and protocol does not change treatment when they should. And it is up to you, right to try, to help them uh, make the right choices. So let's go on. Kathy Neary is asking, thank you, Kathy, for being such a precious partner with our ministry. Uh, Kathy is asking for prayer for her mom, Angela, <clears throat> who is hospitalized with COVID and pneumonia. In the name of Jesus, we speak life, 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 Kathy, to your mother in the name of Jesus. And Natasha uh, is asking for prayer for her dad, Jim, who's moved to ICU today in Houston uh, due to COVID and uh don't take no for an answer, sweetheart. Push, demand that they try one milligram nebulized budesonide. You can look back uh, into September of my videos and you'll see all of the things that, that I was learning how to deal with the hospital. Uh, bless their hearts, they're doing the best they can uh, with the protocol. They don't always know. We, we have the Holy Ghost, you see. We know more. And then I had, the Lord gave me such great people to help me with Dr. Bartlett and Dr. Colbert and they help me uh, know what to do and how to say and what to say and what to ask for and how to push. And they uh, taught me how to deal with it. And then my precious lawyer friend, Shadi, who helped me uh, write the letter. And we have that letter as a template. If you need it, uh, you can call our office, call and speak to Debbie, the number that I put up earlier. And you can ask her for the template of that letter. Now, of course, you can't use Shadi's letter, but she wrote a perfect letter, according to Dr. Bartlett, to send to a hospital and you, you could give that to your lawyer and uh, your attorney could use that as a template to write a letter. Um, we pray for this evil to subside. We pray uh, for favor to come forth in these hospitals for God's people to have favor. Uh, we pray for um, 
Uh, Vivian is asking for prayer for her son, Andre, with COVID. And we pray in the name of Jesus for Andre to be healed. And Leslie is asking for prayer for her uh, husband, Brad. And that just makes me, uh, we, we, as so many wives are praying for their husbands and husbands are praying for their wives. And uh, we just speak in the name of Jesus, life, 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 life to these mates, to these children, to these family members. Um, Janice is asking for prayer for her sister, Diane, who uh, had a hip replacement and was battling that. And now she's battling COVID and her breathing. And so we just speak in the name of Jesus and we ask for healing to come forth in the name of Jesus. Favor, 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 favor. Yes, Carol, there are, uh, I went through all of those vitamins that we are taking. I'm looking at your comments um, that I'm still taking. I was actually taking them before because we travel and uh, I've had to cancel two more months, by the way. So keep praying for us. Keep praying for our finances. And if God speaks to you, uh, Carol is a precious partner and Pamela is a precious partner and Christine and, and uh, Joe and Jesse and so many of you, Vanessa, all are partners with our ministry. I so appreciate it. And if the Lord speaks to you and you're not partnering with us, but the Lord speaks to you to partner with us, uh, just a one-time gift to our ministry. If you're enjoying these uh, messages and these prayer times together, uh, or if you would like to join us in a uh, monthly uh, partnership, thank you so much. I'm just uh, believing that God will speak to you and that you'll join us and we will continue to bring the word first online and also uh, when we get to go back out again. And so, um, yes, let me go back to Carol's question. Carol, yes, there are specific uh, vitamins to be taking. Uh, Debbie has a list of those in the office if you don't have that list, but also on the video uh, back in September that said uh, the protocol from Dr. Colbert and Dr. Bartlett, it also tells you not only what vitamins, but the dosage that you should be taking at this time. Uh, I take high doses of vitamin C, D3, zinc, um, quercetin, uh, these are all the things I was taking and I'm continuing to take them. Now, Harry's taking other supplements because of the lung injury. Uh, he's taking Vascuzyme and he's taking uh, Celgevity and, and uh, other things like that. He's building his adrenal system back up with a DSF and he chews them up. They're nasty, he says, but he chews them up and that helps the, the adrenal system to come back into function. So there are many things in the natural that we can do and uh, we should be doing. We should be doing all. Uh, I, tell me where the verse is uh, in Proverbs. Uh, it's in the Speak the Word for Healing book. Pamela, you probably know that says, uh, for him who does not help himself is a brother to him who commits suicide. So we, we need to do the right things. We need to sleep enough. We need to drink plenty of water. We don't need to eat any sugar because sugar destroys your immune system. Uh, I make sure I eat live foods, produces a live body. Dead foods produce a dead body. So try to eat uh, a live foods, drink plenty of water. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, did I, could anybody, is anybody taking notes enough to be able to say vitamin C and D3 and uh, I'm going down. I take magnesium uh, because I've had colon cancer uh, and I've, I've taken all of these vitamins for years, but I've been very, very diligent to take the dose that Dr. Colbert and Dr. Bartlett recommends um, during this season. So quercetin and vitamin C and D3 and zinc. Uh, I know those, I take an aspirin a day so that my blood stays thin. Um, because I had COVID and it creates blood clots sometimes. So I've been doing, I'm not going to have a blood clot. Harry's not going to have any more blood clots in the name of Jesus, but that's one of the side effects. So we take an aspirin a day. And then there's also these mouthwashes that um, Dr. Colbert recommends that you rinse your mouth with, and they have certain ingredients in them. So uh, I'll try to come back into the comments when I'm not live and uh, write some of that in for you and the doses. Um, but I'm not, no, listen, I am not your doctor and I am not diagnosing nor am I recommending. I'm just telling you what I do and I'm telling you what I've been doing. So, um, okay, are you ready for the word? Uh, Joe's asking, please pray for my husband, David, who already had emphysema before he got COVID and now the long-term effects. 
um, yes, amen, in Jesus' name. We are praying for David, Joe, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate your partnership, too. Salvation for your grandchildren. Stacy. thank you so much for partnering with us. In the name of Jesus. Uh, hi, Kim Tennyson. Good to see you, my sweet cousin. Thank you for always checking on my mom and taking care of her. And Mary, thank you so much, all of you. Hopefully, I didn't miss any of um, your questions, but... Um, I've, I've got you all here. Now, let's jump into the Word because I have something I want to share with you that we, uh, I really feel like the Lord is saying about uh, 2022. Now, I had all these notes left over from last week that I wanted to get to, and the Lord said that I could, but not today. And I was going to get to one that I, I gave a few weeks ago that I never finished, and the Lord said I could, but he said not today. So, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go with exactly what the Lord said to do. Are you okay with that? I know you are, and even if you aren't, I'm okay with that because I'm going to go with what he said, and I know you want me to also. First of all, I want to talk to you. Oh, I sh oh, I shoot, I forgot my, uh, I forgot, I had a little thing to show you today. I had a little, uh, 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 what would you call it, an illustration, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. So the Lord was speaking to me early this morning, and he was talking to me about, I'm reading through this old, old book, Releasing the Spirit, and that was going to be master class for my uh, um, master class students uh, for this past week, um, but I've been reading through it for months now. I think Pastor Holly Kokenauer sent it to me a year ago, but it's an old Watchman Nee book, and I read it years and years ago. I read it 10 years ago, and then I've been in it studying, and it talks about the inner man, which is we would call the spirit or the holy of holies of who we are, the outer man, which we would call the soul, that's our mind, our will, and our emotions, and then the outermost man, and that's how he talks about it, and that would be our body or our flesh, and I've been studying and praying and asking the Lord to be with me and to show me and to uh, help me and all of these things and uh, how to let the light of God that is inside of me and the spirit of God that is inside my innermost man to come forth, but he has to come through the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, which most of the time, the spirit can never even get through that because most people are so controlled by their soul, by the way they feel, by the way they think, that their spirit man that, that is filled with the Holy Ghost and you're supposed to be led by the Spirit and those who are led by the Spirit are called the sons of God. And so most people are not led by the Spirit. They're led by their flesh or they're led by their soul. They're led by what's going on around them. Uh, Proverbs 15, 15 is my life motto. He who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm spirit-led. No matter what's going on around me, no matter what circumstances are going on around me, I am spirit-led, which means I'm always in a continual feast regardless of my circumstances. But that means my spirit man must be the lead. Now, we're made triune like God, God Father, God Son, God Holy Ghost. But the difference in us and the Godhead is the Godhead is triune, three in one. They're all God, and they're all, nobody's suppressed in any way. We are made triune, spirit, soul, and body, but our spirit man must lead our soul and our body, which means for our spirit man to come out and burst forth with the light of God in this season and the glory of God in this season, for our spirit man to burst forth, he has to break through our soul realm, which can really mess us up. It's where we get our feelings hurt, and we get offended, and we get all hung up there, and we get bitter there. And all of that's got to go. He's got to break through all that, which means it's got to be broken. The Spirit of God cannot come through an unbroken soul. The soul has to be broken so that the fragrance of God can come forth out of you. And then even more, the body has to be broken so that the spirit man can come through the soul and the flesh and the spirit man can lead. Now, that's the difference between the Godhead triune and us triune. In our triune, only one can lead, and it has to be your spirit man. Your spirit man that is filled with the Holy Spirit. 
your spirit man houses the Holy Spirit that is encapsulized inside your soul and inside your uh, body. Now, your body has to be broken and your soul has to be broken for the Spirit of God to come forth. Now, this I was meditating on this. I've been reading it for months. I've been trying to figure out how to say it without people getting all up my arms. You know, oh, God wants to break my body. No, it, that is not it at all. He is gentle. He is kind. And this morning as I was praying in the Holy Ghost, I was uh, up making breakfast for my precious husband, Harry. And while I was making his breakfast, uh, I was also boiling some eggs, and I was going to stuff eggs. I'm a southern girl. We like to stuff eggs, and it's nice to have eggs in the house and ready. To, when you're really, really hungry, you'll grab an egg instead of grabbing something you shouldn't. And so <clears throat> I was peeling the eggs, and while I was peeling the eggs, I was cracking them and putting them in water. If you put them in cold water and you crack them open, then the shell comes off easily. And as I was peeling the eggs, a couple of them... Uh, I didn't give them enough time, and the water couldn't get between the shell and the and the uh, white of the egg. And so when I started to peel, the white got damaged. It, it got scarred up, and it wasn't very pretty anymore because um, it, it some of the the some of the white came off with the shell. And so I was, mm -hmm, you know, wait, just wait a minute, be patient, give it time, and let that cold water get in there. And then when you peel it, and then I peeled another one, and it came out perfectly. And so uh, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said, this egg is like you. This shell is your body, and it has to be broken. And your soul is like the white of the egg, and your spirit man is like the yellow of the egg. And the whole egg is triune. But you have to get to the yellow of the egg, you have which is where the fat is. Oh, 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 oh. Come on now, somebody. You've got the spirit of God inside you and it's the oil. It's the good fat of the spirit of God inside of you, that oil that makes you healthy and strong. And so as I was peeling the egg, the spirit of God said to me, you see, when you soak your body and soul in water and your body is broken, you can separate the body from the soul without scarring the soul if there's enough water that's soaking. Oh my Lord, the Word of God is the water of the Word. And if while God is breaking your flesh and your soul so that your spirit can come forth, you must soak yourself in the word of God. And while you soak yourself in the word of God, then as you're being peeled, then as the, as the flesh is shedding and leaving you, as this is happening, you're, you're in the water and the water is helping your soul to not be scarred and to not be messed up. Up. But oh, glory to God. Now, is that an illustration or what? Go on, go on and boil yourself an egg and try to peel it without soaking it in water. And you're going to know what I mean. You, if you soak it in water and you crack the shell and you give it some time, it just slips right off. But if you hurry it up and you try to do it when it's too hot, and if you hurry it up and you don't put any water on it, you're going to have that white all marred up. That soul realm's going to get all marred up because you don't have enough word. It is the word of God that keeps you while God is breaking forth the light of his glory in this season. So, did that make sense? Let me just look and see if anybody thought that was a good illustration. You, can you see it? The anointing is in his presence and the word keeps you, Mary. The word keeps you while God is doing what he needs to do to break the flesh off of us and to break our emotions off of us and to break us who's all moved by the tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life. You see, that's why I like to wear my tree of life. It reminds me to stay in the spirit and not get all hung up watching the news and hearing all kinds of bad things. Uh, so, I'm so glad... Uh, Hope that all made sense for you. And so, um, great. Now, let's go on. So, as we go into this, the Spirit of God began to speak really strong to me. 
And uh, he told me to remind you, don't rush. This is a time to wait on the Lord. Don't rush through things. Uh, don't, don't rush. So I started looking up some things about garments, about um, this thought came to me. I can never leave to my children or my grandchildren a garment that is not mine, that I don't own, that I don't wear. And it made me think about priesthood. And here we are, 22, which means light, 23 next year, which means death, 24, which means priesthood. So between the light and the final level of your garment of the priesthood, there's a dying process that's going to happen. And this is the process, not of dying in your natural. I'm not talking about death like we tend to think of it, but I'm talking about how about a death to your flesh realm so that you're not ruled by your flesh and how about a death to your soul realm so you're not ruled by your mind your will your emotions but you're ruled by the spirit of god and so we're headed all this time from one unison two unity three the bride four the earth five grace six flesh humanity mankind seven it is finished eight New beginnings, nine, Holy Spirit. We go all the way till we get to 19, faith, 20, the redeemed, redemption, 21, where we just came through, exceeding sinfulness of sin, 22, light, let there be light. Here we are, next year, 23, death, and the final, 24, priesthood. And as we go through these years, each one means something, but it's taken us to a place of ownership. You're owning your priesthood garments. You're covering as, for he said in, Re in Revelation 1 verse 6, Jesus said, for I have made you kings and priests unto God. So he's making you a priest, not because you earn it, but because you have decided to receive what Jesus can do for you and in you and through you. And so <clears throat> Exodus 35 19 talks about holy garments. Exodus 39, 41 talks about holy garments. Ezekiel 44, 19 talks about what you don't wear when you go among people. So it's, it's saying when you minister to the Lord, those garments are holy. Now this is Old Testament. It's before Jesus made a way for us. And so the priest then had to take off their holy garments and not wear them among the people. That's what uh, Ezekiel 44, 19 is all about. So they had to take off their holy garments. They stayed in the holy place. And then they put on their regular garments to go out among the people. Now, Psalm 45, verse 8 says, Your garments are all the fragrances of the presence of God. So if you wear your garment... While you're in the presence of God, your very garment, now we're talking about now, your body, your body. Your body houses your soul and your spirit. Your body begins to be fragrant from the very presence of God. And then it goes on to talk about this when Pastor Laura watches this. I want you to go back and read this in Psalm 45 verse 8. It talks about in that same exact time, stringed instruments. So your worship. So when you're in the presence of God, worship him and it changes the way you smell. You go from that filthy smell of sin to that fragrant smell of holiness. And then Zechariah 3.3 3 talks about filthy garments and Joshua, who was the high priest. And then, and then he had to have his filthy garments removed. And that's what Jesus did for us. That's the whole point. That's a prophetic word about what Jesus did for us. And then the Holy Spirit moves inside of us and we smell even sweeter. We are so filled with the fragrance of God. Then Matthew 28, verse 3, I'm getting to, to my point now. Garments as white as snow. Mark 5, 28, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Do you remember? When I talked about uh, having the vision, and, and I think I actually went to heaven three times and I saw Gabrielle, and all of their garments were alive, the, the fabrics, uh, everything in heaven is alive, even fabrics and clothing, it's all alive. And so here, uh, Jesus' literal garment the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch his garment, I know there's enough healing power in his garment. I mean, 
He just smells like heaven. He just, mm, I could just smell his garment from here. She said as she crawled in all of her sickness and all of her disease, she crawled until she could touch the garment of Jesus. And the moment she touched one little tiny thread of the garment of Jesus, Boom! She was healed of a 12-year disease. I'm telling you, it is all about being filled with the glory and the light of God so that your garment, your soul realm, and your flesh realm are changed forever. Then Isaiah 61 verse 3 talks about the garments of praise. Come on, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh yeah, this is what most people do. They, are, they, they got this old heavy spirit going on and, and it's become so much a part of them that they never ever take it off. But sometimes they've learned how to be religious enough to go into church and put a garment of praise on on top of the spirit of heaviness. But that is not what Isaiah 61 says. It says put on the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Don't just cover up the spirit of heaviness with your little old garment of praise and then when you leave the church, hang your garment of praise up on the back coat rack. Come on, take off that spirit of heaviness. Put on your garment of praise. That's the one that's gonna smell like God. That's the one that's gonna make you smell like heaven. That's the one that's gonna cause things to begin to change around you. I'm telling you, put on the garment of praise. Now we get to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21. He appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy garments. Glory to God. I preached this. My uh, Worship is my weapon. I preached this for years. But I never, ever noticed that it says in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21. He appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy priestly garments. Why would it even say that? Well, why wouldn't it just say he appointed singers to, to sing to the Lord and praise him as they went out before the army? Mm -mm. He pointed out that they were wearing their holy priestly garments. Think about your flesh. It's time, baby, to repent. It's time to get over this flesh thing and stop just using it as, oh, well, that's just my flesh. Oh, no, it's filthy and it's got to go. Everything that is not like God is filthy and it's got to go. If your thinking is stinking, you got to get rid of it and it's got to go. You want to be wearing a holy priestly garment? You want to be appointed to go out in front of an army and sing and worship with your garment of praise on? your holy priestly garment then you're gonna have to get rid of that filthy talking and that filthy thinking and that filthy acting pretending like you're somebody in front of people but being a filthy person behind closed doors I'm telling you God is dealing with filth just like he did with Joshua in Zechariah 3 3 I'm telling you the priesthood is generational and if you want your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and even children that haven't been born yet to be holy, to be saved, it starts with you. You can pass it down generationally. If you were never born into the right tribe, see, see back then, Back then, you had to be born into the Levitical tribe, Levi, the tribe of Levi. The priest came from Levi. But, oh, there was something that happened, and this is where... I'm going to take you today. 2 Samuel chapter 6. All of you have heard me teach it. You've heard me teach it. <clears throat> David finally got into his city and he got things set up the way he wanted it. And he was king and Saul was out and he was in. And my, Saul's daughter was his wife, Micah, and Michael. And they had it all arranged and everything was going great and David was used to being king now and he liked being king but the Ark of the Covenant was not in the city of David and David got to realize and he really needs God's presence to really be the great king that God prophesied that he should be through Samuel the prophet he needed the presence of God so he goes to move it and you go into 2 Samuel and all of you have heard me teach this you can go right on our website and you can download for just I mean 
I don't know, a dollar, two dollars. You can download Addicted to His Presence. You can download Invisible Worshipper, and you should. And these messages are filled with so much more of what I'm talking about right now. But in 2 Samuel chapter 6, okay, here we go. And here we are in uh, chapter 7 of, of uh, re re Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship addicted to his presence. Now chapter 6 is invisible worshipers. So if you you can listen to the message and this is called the casualty of casual worship. We got a lot of casual worshipers and there's going to be a lot of casualties. There've already been a lot of casualties of casual worship and there's going to be more because you know better. It's holy. Worship is holy unto God. So addicted to his presence is talking about this story I'm about to share with you. Now, this is what the Spirit of God began to show me. I'm looking for my notes because I don't want to lose them. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, we have David, and the Ark of the Covenant has been for a very long time out of position. It's not in the city of David. And David arose and he, and he gathered. He gathered. He didn't assemble. The scripture says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. There's been a whole lot of gathering, but a little tiny bit of assembling. But when you assemble, you become one. And when you become one, there's power in it. David gathered 30,000. He arose and went to all of them. They went up to Kareth Jerem to bring up from there to Jerusalem, the city of David, the ark of God, which is called by the name. They didn't call it anything. They just said the name. Why? Because the name in ancient Hebrew means destroys chaos. Do you realize every time you say in the name of Jesus, you're actually saying destroys chaos. Now they're moving the Ark of the Covenant and they're moving the presence of God and they're moving it from Abinadab's house where it's been for a very long time. And Ahio and Yuza are the sons, are priest sons, second generation. Abinadab is the first generation in this story. And Ahio and Yuza are the sons of priests. So they're also priests. Why? Because priesthood is generational. And so they're moving, they're helping David move it, and they move the presence of God the wrong way. Now, I'm going to come back and teach this. If I do School of Worship online, I definitely will. I teach this in person. It's all throughout uh, Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship, and you can download the full messages of these right off of our website, Salem Family Ministries. But I want to talk to you about this, and I want to get to a point that I believe you I've never seen before. I, I just The Lord just showed it to me today. So <clears throat> David is moving the ark. They move it the way the Philistines move the ark. Why? Because the longer you stay out of God's presence, the more you forget how to handle the presence of God. David, he was doing great as king without the presence of God. So he forgot how to handle the presence of God. He forgot to train the priests how to handle the presence of God. He forgot that the presence of God the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be moved on the shoulders of humanity so that the presence of God was higher than their heads, higher than your thinking. The Ark of the Presence of God has to be above your head. Isaiah said to us, God said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And so the presence of God has to be elevated above your thinking. And the presence of God needs to be sitting on the shoulders of humanity, not carried on a cart, which is how David and these priests thought, well, you know what? It'd be a lot quicker if we just stuck the ark on a cart and we pulled it by some cows or some oxen. And hey, that would be quick. You know what? The presence of God is not about drive through. The presence of God is not about this mentality of get it quick. The presence of God is about obeying his way. And the presence of God, God had already taught through his spirit how to handle his presence. But the longer King David was out of the presence of God, the more he forgot how to handle God's presence. God's presence is holy. And he forgot that. And he copied the world 
in the way he moved at the presence of God. And I'm just telling you, if, if you don't have the move of God in the presence of God in your service, if you don't, if, if you are creating an atmosphere with lights and smoke machines and, and not having your services filled with the presence of God, you're copying the world's ways. And if, and if your musicians are playing some Beach Boy tune during the offering, I'm telling you, there's a casualty going to happen with casual worship. And I'm warning you right now, it's holy presence. God's presence is holy and must be treated as such. David decides to let them move it that way. They move the presence of God on a cart, just like the Philistines did, pulled by cows. They get on the threshing floor. It had ruts. The, ark, the cart did like this. The ark begins to slide. Yuza reaches us out and forgets the presence of God has been in his house his whole life. And he isn't dead. So he knew not to touch it. But he got all caught up in the atmosphere of 30,000 people and this big parade from Abinadab's house all the way to the city of Jerusalem. And on the way, everybody's shouting and a big parade is happening. And you can get all caught up in the emotions of people and forget how to be reverent to the presence of God. And if you touch God with an unholy touch, boom, boom. Yuza was dead right there on the ground in the middle of the road. Of course, the parade stops. David gets all upset and offended. I can't do anything right. <sighs> he starts to go back to the house, leaving the Ark of the Covenant right there. And everybody's got, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are we going to do with the Ark of the Covenant? King David looks over. He says, put it over there in that house. That house was Obed-Edom's house. Obed-Edom. Let me talk to you about Obed-Edom because you're going to identify with Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom. His name, Obed, means slave, hard worker. Edom comes from Esau, enemy of Israel. Slave, enemy of Israel. The Gittite, which means he's from Gath, G-A-T-H. What does that mean? That means he comes from Goliath's hometown, which means in his bloodline, is probably Philistine bloodline. Mm. This boy was not from the right bloodline, not from the right tribe, and David puts the presence of God in his house. Huh. Wow. And yet, for three months, nobody dies. Everything the man has flourishes. Do you know what this is? It's a sign of things to come. When Jesus makes a way for those of us not born in the right bloodline, those of us born on the wrong side of the tracks, those of us with not the pedigree, we don't have all the things necessary in the natural, but the Spirit of God moves into our house and that qualifies us above history, that qualifies us above bloodline, that qualifies us above all the things that the world would say disqualifies us. When the Spirit of God moves inside of you, you are qualified beyond measure. And Obed-Edom was qualified simply because the Spirit of God moved into his house. Nobody died under his watch, but I'll tell you what happened. He may be from Goliath's hometown. He may be a Gittite. He may be from Gath. He may, his name may mean slave, enemy of Israel. But when the presence of God was in his house for three months and David had a change of heart and said, I've got to move the presence of God, and he repented and he did it right and he trained the priests and all of this are in other messages you can download. And he, and he came and he got the Ark of the Covenant and he moved it out of Obed-Edom's house. Guess what happened? Obed-Edom and all of his family had already become addicted to the presence of God. And as they were carrying the Ark of the Present, uh, Presence of God, Ark of the Covenant, out of Obed-Edom's house, Obed-Edom says to his wife and his kids, pack your bags, children. Pack your bags, wife. Get what you need. Because wherever the presence of God goes, that's where we're going. And the next thing you know, you find Obed-Edom and his family in the city of Jerusalem. And somehow or other, 
He has gone in there and convinced them to let him be a priest. All of a sudden, this guy who is not in the right bloodline, who is not in the right family, he is not Levitical, he doesn't have any of the qualifications in the natural to be a priest. Next thing you know, he's a gatekeeper. Next thing you know, he's a worshiper. Next thing you know, he's a doorkeeper. And when it's all said and done and the final time you find their names, you find that the sons of Obed-Edom are in charge of all of the money for King David trusted them above everyone else in his kingdom. Now what does that tell you? Whatever you become addicted to, your kids will be addicted to. If you're addicted to the presence of God, your children will become addicted to the presence of God. And then that means your grandchildren will become addicted to the presence of God. And after that, your great-grandchildren will become addicted to the presence of God. I'm telling you, it is time in this year of the light of God. Let there be light in your thinking, light in your soul, light in your mind, light in your body. For every person we pray for healing, I'm speaking the light of God come forth in your cellular level and eradicate every bit of COVID, every bit of depression, every bit of oppression. Eradicate cancer out of your body. Let there be light. Let that light bring forth the glory and the power of God like it's never come forth ever before in your life. May you be filled to overflowing in your spirit man to break forth through your soul and your spirit man to break through your flesh to come forth, shine be radiant with the glory of God. This is the time. This is the year. What is your part in 2022? What must I do in 2022? You must be filled with the glory of God. You must be filled with the light of God. You must be filled with the Spirit of God and you must be led by the Spirit. Now what you might find interesting, and this is mostly for my deep folks, as I begin to study this out in the Hebrew, Pamela, you're going to love this. Laura, you're going to love this. When I looked up the word Gittite from Gath, that was Strong's number 1663. And then that took me to 1661, which meant a Philistine city. That took me to 1660, which meant in the sense of treading out the grapes, a wine press vat for holding the grapes and pressing them. That would be the outer. Then that took me to 5059. Each one led me deeper, deeper. Now I want you to hear. Oh, my Lord, you got... Obed Edom on the side of the road with the wife and the kids watching the parade go by with the priests and King David and 30,000 men and the dancers and the singers and all the, the marching band. And you got all this going on in little Obed Edom there and his wife and his kids. They're all standing there right in front of their house watching the parade go by. Listen to what, oh my Lord, listen. 5059, a minstrel a player of stringed instruments, beat a tune with his fingers to make music with the stringed instrument to sing with the stringed instrument. That's all of what that means. Now, what does that mean to you? That's the bottom root of the word. So when you see the word Gittite, Obed-Edom, the Gittite, it actually takes you all the way back to who he really is. He's a musician. His whole family, they're musicians. They're standing on the side of the road, probably got their tambourines going. They probably got their instruments going. Listen, God's going to move toward praise. Even when you're not quite sure how to do it yet, if you just will praise, the Spirit of God's going to move toward you. Oh, glory to God, I could get so excited. When I think about what God is wanting to do in you, what he's wanting to do in me, what he's wanting to do in this nation, in our world, in our churches. Come on, beloved. God created you to worship him. The very DNA strand inside of you looks like a harp. 
The very cellular level of who you are is a vibration creating a movement, creating a sound wave. God spoke you into existence. He said, let there be light. And inside of the light of the glory of God, inside of your cellular level is a light bursting forth and a sound wave bursting forth and worship bursting forth. Come on, get out in front of the warriors and praise him. Praise him. The very praise inside of Obed-Edom and his family is what drew the presence of God. It's what drew David to say, put the Ark of the Covenant in his house. God knows who you are on the cellular level and he wants to change you. He wants to rearrange you. I'm telling you, if you got your Rebuilding the Ruins of Worship book. Go back and study it out again. Study it out. Study every bit of it because God's rebuilding your worship. If you don't have it, you might order it and go ahead and get the workbook too so you can really work it through. I'm telling you, God is moving in a season like I've never seen. I've never known such a time as this. Such a time as this, I've never seen. I've never known. But it's time for you and me to burst forth with the light of God. Keep praying for Harry, please. Keep praying for each other. Keep praying for all these precious men and women who are fighting this virulent disease. In the name of Jesus that destroys chaos, be healed, be free, be gloriously set free. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up, will you? Before you stop today, give me a thumbs up right here on YouTube. And do me another favor, too. Would you hit that little share button and share this with all your friends through text, through email, on your social media platforms? And one more favor, if the Lord moves on your heart, order some jewelry, order some books, order some CDs, download some worship. If you don't have Roar, you want to do that. If you don't have the sound, the, the sound you want to download those because all of those frequencies are making a difference right now. Worship, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't stop praying in the Holy Ghost. He's speaking. Go boil you an egg. Break the shell. Soak it in the water. Don't forget to soak in the water of the Word every day. I'll see you next Sunday. You're precious to me. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I ask the Lord to bless you, to keep you, to make his face shine upon you, to give you peace every moment of every day. Keep praying for Harry. You are loved.